In this video, I'm gonna give you some very practical advice on buying land that I haven't seen a lot on the internet. And those are a couple of things that when you see them, or if you hear about them while you're on a piece of land that you're looking at and you're thinking about buying, you should get in your car and leave. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, JS Bronze here from Keep It Tiny. Now, I got a comment in one of my videos asking me about certain things that when you see them on a piece of land, what would make you not want to buy them? I think that's an amazing question, so thank you for leaving the comments down below. I read them, I walk through them, and let's get into that. Today I want to talk about certain things that I think if you see them on a piece of land that you're looking at, just walk away, right? So, you know, if you see these types of things and you ask the realtor about them and, you know, you don't like the responses that you get, sometimes it's worth just getting in your car and just going to the next piece of land. Real quick, one last thing. You definitely want to hear the last tip. If you don't learn what I tell you in this last tip, I promise you it actually can make or break you. Let's get into the content though. Let's get things started. Now, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about today is a little controversial. Some people will really agree with me or disagree with me. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, I wanted to talk to you about water. It's amazing. A lot of people have had that idea of, you know, having a piece of land with a beautiful river flowing through or a piece of land with a beautiful pond on it. But now let's unpack a couple different things with water on your land. First off, it removes how much land you have to build on. You can't build a cabin on top of a pond. But on top of that, you're also not allowed to build too close to these types of things. And what that means is there's a certain distance that you have to go back from pieces of water that you can build on. So what that means is you can't build your cabin directly at the edge of the river or the edge of the water. That's not allowed in a lot of different places. Water is something that is very difficult to control, right? You see all these natural disasters and you think, you know, that can't be me, it's just a little river. Well, the thing with your little river that flows through your land is it can keep eroding the land around it. So in 10 years, that little river, that little stream could be very large. And what it can do is slowly reduce the amount of land that you have to build on. On top of that, there's flooding. When it rains, a lot of these little bodies of water can turn into very big bodies of water and it can wreak havoc on your land. Now, even if you're not building anywhere close to the river or the water, uh, it can really muddy up that area, thus making it uh, you know, aesthetically not as pleasing. And on top of that, it's just a pain to upkeep, to walk through, muddy boots, muddy tractor tires, muddy lawnmower. All of those things can be very difficult. So that's another thing on top of everything else that can make a small body of water, you know, just very difficult. Now the thing with water that a lot of people aren't even thinking about is there's an entire ecosystem that lives down there. Even if there's no fish, you're gonna get frogs, you're gonna get birds flying to it, you're gonna get all types of things. And that beautiful piece of water can get real muddy, real brown, real colorful if you know what I mean, very fast, especially in the summer months when it gets really hot and those animals use your water to cool off. Here's a quick pro tip for you guys. If you're thinking, hey, that's cool. You're just some guy on the internet and you don't even have a thousand subscribers yet. That's true. Like the video and uh, give me a subscribe if you like this type of content and help me out there. But on top of that, you're right. Don't listen to everything that you see on the internet. Do your own research. So if you are gonna get a piece of land and you are saying like, let me think about this, there's a couple different things that you can do. You would wanna first, look up, uh, historically speaking, how much rain that area naturally gets. You can find this online. And lastly, you also wanna do your research on when was the last time that area was flooded or if your area is prone to flooding. If it is, please, please listen to that crazy guy on the internet who doesn't have a thousand subscribers yet and just do not buy that piece of land. If you are ever gonna have to deal with flooding, it is not worth it. Please listen to me. So me personally, I would tell you guys, if you see a piece of land that has water on it, just walk away, unless you're advanced. If you really know what you're doing, if you've had uh, off-grid situations before, if you purchased land before in the past, then fine, go for it, it's gonna be beautiful. But for everybody else, it'll be a very big headache and it might not be worth it for you, especially if you're buying your piece of land to run a business or a glamp site. Because what you need to think about is ROI. Do you really want to spend X amount of dollars per year fighting your land? Or do you want land that's going to work with you? HOAs 
or homeowners associations are the devil. Just stay away from them, especially when you're buying land. Now you may be thinking, hey Jamie, I'm buying a piece of land that's out in the desert. I'm buying a piece of land that's in the woods, in the mountains. There's no way there's an HOA here. I'm not even gonna ask, I'm just moving forward. I hate to tell you, it doesn't matter what you think. It only matters what is true. So make sure that that piece of land doesn't have an HOA. And you'd be surprised that certain remote areas actually do have HOAs. Now, having an HOA on a raw piece of land that you just purchased that you wanna build on is the exact opposite of what you're looking for. You're looking for freedom, you're looking to be able to build what you want, you're looking to start a business, you're looking to start a glamp site. Uh, having an HOA is literally buying into someone else telling you what you're allowed to do on your land. That is the exact opposite of what you would want and it makes it very difficult. I'm certain there's a lot of people out there who currently have HOAs right now and don't think they're so bad. I would say to those people, you probably have never tried to build anything new on your land. You probably have never tried to move the fence line. You've never done anything out of the box. And lastly, HOAs will steal you of your vision and your creativity while you're building on your land. So trust me, just stay away. Now you're on a piece of land, everything's going swell, it looks nice, and you look to the person that you're with, whether it's a broker, realtor, et cetera, and you say, hey, are there any easements, by the way? And they say, yes. Just get in your car and go home, right? Now, I, I know that you know all easements aren't the same, they're not all terrible, but what that means is, is that you are stuck in a contract that you can't get out of, that you had nothing to do with setting up. So for everyone that's not aware of what an easement is, that's when someone else is allowed to do something very specific on your land. So let's say that you own 10 acres and your neighbor behind you owns two. And the only way to get to their land is by driving through yours. They may have an easement on your land that says, hey, we're allowed to drive through your land to get to ours. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but maybe that's exactly where you were wanting to build a bell tent or put down an A-frame. So what that means is you legally have to allow them to use your land for that specific reason. So I personally believe if you can, just try to stay away from those types of situations and arrangements. The worst thing that you wanna do is buy a new piece of land and be stuck to someone else. So now you always have to work with your neighbor Bob or Bill down the street whenever you need to get something done. Speaking of neighbors, wow. <laughs> I don't want to say that if you see neighbors while you're looking for a piece of land and just not buy the piece of land, but if you see certain traits, just be aware of it. So neighbors really are a mixed bag, but the best type of neighbor is the neighbor that leaves you the hell alone. All right? You're not out here trying to make friends. You're out here trying to start a business. That being said, don't be rude, don't be mean, and uh, understand, especially if you aren't from that area, that you know you for the first few years, you really are a guest and you should try to get to know people. But at the same time, the type of neighbors that you want are the type of neighbors that are gonna leave you alone. Give you a wave in the morning, say, hey, how you doing while they get the paper, make terrible chit chat about the weather, then go back into their house and do their own thing. They don't want you annoying them and you don't want them annoying you. That's the best type of thing. Now this next one is a steaming, large, hot, brown, mosquito-y, dirty pile <laughs> No, but really, if you see large animal droppings, you should be worried. You should try to find out what's going on. Me personally, I don't know what the hell's going on. And this is really, if you can't tell, it's for everyone out there who's not from these rural areas who feel extremely comfortable. I don't want to fight a moose every night. I just don't. So while you're looking at a piece of property, look down and see what you're stepping in. That can be a very big indicator on what types of animals and most importantly, what size animals are on your land. Now, some people out there again may be thinking to themselves, I don't give a damn if my land is a deer path or if there's, it's an animal crossing. Uh, I'm just gonna put on some fences and you know I'll keep them off my land. Now, that's a pretty crappy idea for a couple of reasons. Number one, we as humans really need to give back to mother nature and not take away. We've done enough, everybody. Let things be. The next thing though is the fact that it's very difficult to fight nature. Nature almost always wins or makes you pay a lot, either with your life, your physical health, or your wallet. 
nature will make you pay. Another thing you want to think about, especially for those people that want to build a glamp site or you are homesteading where you yourself or other people are going to constantly be on that land. Do you have dogs? Do you have animals of your own? Do you have small children? Looking at these large animal droppings, you really have to be worried about someone else's health and their physical well-being on your land. Think about the PR nightmare that someone gets hurt on your land because an animal came through. You really want to be mindful and aware of these things to protect yourself from things that could happen to you in the future. Be smart. So I normally hate it when people give advice like I'm about to give you where it's not one way or the other, but I have to give it to you. You don't want land that has too many trees and you don't want land that has no trees. Now, if you have too many trees, again, it's going to be costly for you to clear out that piece of land to, you know, put down a flat area of land that you can build something on. And also, again, I'm really not a big fan of humans moving into nature and just disrespecting the place. On the flip side of that, you don't want a wide open football field. If you do have no trees, you're going to have no shade. You're going to have nothing that will stop the wind coming through and cutting through your land. Now, I actually did make this mistake. I own a piece of land that is extremely flat with absolutely no trees. I thought it was amazing because again, I didn't want to bring myself to a place where I would have to destroy nature to a point just so I can make a profit. I thought I've hit a gold mine when I found a flat piece of land that has no trees. What I wasn't thinking about is the fact that my land has no shade. So when I'm out there getting my hard work on, the sun is beating down on me. Luckily, I'm the proud son of Haitian immigrants. I can withstand the heat a bit, but it could be very difficult for some people, especially if you're an older individual or someone who has any type of health reasons that they cannot be out in the sun for too long. Those are things to be mindful of. You're going to get a ton of sunlight. There's going to be nothing to stop the wind as it just cuts through your land. So it's a double edged sword. You really want to find something that is right in the middle ground or, and this may cost you a bit of cash, but you can plant trees on your land. Now with planting trees, you can bring in a fully grown tree, have it planted in and be up and running real quick. Now that is very technical uh, and it's a bit costly. If you want to bring in smaller trees and water them, you know, just planting a tree from scratch. Yeah. In about uh, 15, 20 years, it's going to be beautiful, man. I can't wait to come see it. For everyone who stayed to the end and is hearing about this tip, God bless you because this tip is actually one of the most important tips that I gave out in this video. Water and mineral rights. Now, just because you purchased a piece of land that has a, a large river running through it, or you own a piece of land and you step foot in gold, or you own a piece of land and you step foot, next thing you know, oil just starts spurting out, that doesn't mean you actually own that. The person who owns the water and the mineral rights they own that. So you need to be aware of that. I know this is something that is counterproductive. It makes no sense. And people who are just getting into this will have never heard this before, but your water and mineral rights may have already been sold to someone else and you don't get them. This one again is something that please listen to me. Heed my warnings. If you don't own your land outright, just step away from it. If you own your land, but someone else is allowed to do X, Y, and Z, you don't want to deal with it. So now you own your land and someone else has the water and mineral rights to your land. That sounds absolutely terrible. And also if you're starting a glamping site, that will stop you dead in your tracks. Buying land is complicated. Starting a glamping site is complicated. Making money from tiny homes, yurts, tents, domes, real estate, etc., is complicated, but it's extremely possible. What you really want to do is bathe in this content. That's what I did. And about three, five years ago, I was, you know, a real novice to this type of stuff. Now it's gotten to the point where I'm trying my hardest to give back to people. So that way they don't make the same mistakes that I did and they get to learn faster. If you're down with that, please like this video, subscribe to the channel for more content that can help you guys out. Thanks for rocking with me. I'm Jay Esperance and shout out to my boy, Jeremy, man. You've really been helping me out in this channel, giving me some good feedback pushing me to keep striving. And I just really wanted to give you a shout out at the end of this clip. Good looking out, bro. All right, everybody, have a good one.